Today I'm hanging a Philip Jeffries product. This is a natural product. It comes from the earth. And what you're looking at is actually a veneer of a flower, a hyacinth. And so I'm going to show you some techniques that have to be followed when hanging this particular product. Let's first start by saying that this is a glue the product wall covering. Okay, this is our wall. Where do you start hanging the paper? Our wall is 234 inches wide. Half of 234 brings us to 117. That line represents the middle between the left and the right. The only other consideration is, do I start my wallpaper in the middle of the wall covering, if this was my wallpaper? Or is it better that I start each sheet from the middle on either side of my central point? What would determine that? There's only one consideration. It's not what the customer wants. It's not what you think is best. It's not a guess. It's simply this. When you, when you choose either one, and you should work out both, you want to go like this with your either a tape measure, simulating the width of your wall covering or the wall covering itself, and you go like this over to the edge all the way, and you determine whether or not you achieve a better symmetry with either this much of your last sheet left, or you may wind up with something like this, which is what you don't want. So depending on where you start in the middle, will determine how the end sheets look. In either case, you'll have symmetry. However, do you want symmetry that leaves you with a two inch piece at the end? Or would you rather symmetry that leaves you with a 12 inch piece? This is what you want. You desire to achieve the symmetrical result that will give you the largest piece of wool covering at the end. You desire to achieve the symmetrical result that will give you the largest piece of wool covering at the end. Now this could actually cause the need for additional wall covering. And some customers get so angry because they don't understand when they say, just start on the left. Just start here and go here and do this, then do this. So that when you get all the way to the end, you don't have symmetry and you have something like this at the end. They say, that's fine. and then you're completely off, symmetry-wise. And they say, I don't care. But then, when their guests come over and say, oh, I love the paper, but who hung that? Who hung that? Because you have a full tree over here, and, the tr and your horizontal repeat is, let's just say it's 36 inches. You have a full tree here, you have one here, you have one here, you have them, and then you get cut off here. You cut off. And that's the result of not planning your wallpaper layout with symmetry in mind. Now, could you ever start with the edge of your left over there? Yes. Watch when you're doing this. This wall, this wall, this wall, this one, and that one. Then it 
doesn't matter. Because that's a different planning. The consideration when you're doing the entire room, chiefly, are two things. One, what is the first wall that you see when you walk in? It's this one. Well, you want to see how that would look if you could get symmetry. That would be your first consideration. Can I get my best result here with, a, with either a full tree here or half a tree here? Because I'll either have a full tree here or a half a tree here, but it'll be the same on each end. But no worries, because you're going over there and you're continuing over here. Or if you started on the left and you came over, at least you would have the tree continuing onto the side. So when you're doing an accent wall, which is most common today, accent walls, the only full rooms wallpaper hangers today are doing, in my opinion, are bathrooms and kitchens, for the most part. You still get the bedrooms, but they are rare. Most people want a feature wall with wallpaper. So your consideration is usually going to be symmetry. And it may run you into another rule of wall covering. Too many people order their own wallpaper and they say, I have enough. I love asking this question to the homeowner. Would you get two rolls or three? I got three. Well, I guarantee you, very few walls today require only three rolls. And then I explain to them about symmetry and they repeat, which affects the, uh, the number of rolls. Basically today, if you're hanging a wall that is eight feet to 10 feet high, top to bottom, you basically get between two full sheets or at most three full sheets from a common double roll of wall covering. Your wall covering lengths are basically no longer than 33 feet long. And a common width for wall covering today is 20 and a half inches wide. And so even if you were terrible at measuring for wallpaper, the most you're going to get is the number three per roll. But if you wanted to play it safe, you go with two. Because what about having two full sheets and then your third sheet only brings you down to about here? Do you want to be splicing wallpaper on a feature wall that has no furniture in front of it? A horizontal uh, splice? This is when a wallpaper hanger has to be a little assertive with the customer and say, wait a second, let me tell you what that's going to look like. I don't think it will look its best if you splice a sheet three feet from the floor and you don't have furniture in front of it. I don't suggest we do that. That's all. I just want to coach you from my past experiences with wall covering and customers who don't take into consideration the logistics with regard to ordering a sufficient amount of wallpaper. This is our product laid out on the bench. This product is a glue, the product, not the wall. Now let's talk about this product. It's natural. What does that mean? Well, it comes from the earth. They actually take a flower, a, a, a veneer, they, they make flour, a hyacinth, into these strips here. Now, I wanted to show you a test on getting glue and water on this product, okay? It has a shiny appearance, as you can see from this side angle. But what happens if you do the unthinkable and get water on it? What happens? Let's get water on it. Well, they say it's unthinkable. Okay, so many of you do-it-yourselfers will abide by the letter of the law on these products because you've, you've never hung it. But I can tell you, 
as a person who hangs wallpaper six days a week, I can tell you that some of the manufacturers exaggerate. Now, am I saying that Philip Jeffries is exaggerating here? No, but I can tell you they exaggerate. So they say, do not get water on this product. Now, before we went on video on a piece of this wall covering, I, I put water on it and saw no result. And it happens to be the paper you're looking at now. I put water up here. And that was a half an hour ago. Still no, still no effect. What about glue? They say, don't get glue on this. Let's try to get glue on it. As you might, you might get glue on it. And you don't get it off right away. You notice it as you're installing it. Oh my gosh, I got glue on this product. What am I gonna do? La -dee 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 -dee. Not only did you get glue on it, but some idiot rubbed it into the product. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Okay, so you got glue on it. No stain. No stain. I'm using a clear strippable glue. Now, when the company starts paying me to advertise their glue, I'll tell you what glue I'm using, unless you ask me privately. And of course, anybody asking me on my YouTube channel is my friend. I will tell you, but I am not going to be advertising for a glue company that doesn't pay me to advertise for them, right? Think about it. Okay. I don't see any negative impact from having gotten either water or glue on the product, but let's break another rule. They say when you smooth this product, make sure that you go with the grain of the texture. So this would be the grain. But you forgot. And so you do it like this. Uh-oh. Looks like they know what they're talking about. Uh-oh. Looks like they know what they're talking about. By the way, check it out. Do you, do you see that beautiful natural product in there? Do you see the tree? The plant from which this material comes? Look at that. Now, can you fix this? Of course, with a little glue. Watch this. Don't do it. Follow the directions. Because you may wind up with something that looks like that. Okay? There's your test. Follow your directions on your Philip Jeffries product. But I just showed you the effects on my product that I'm hanging today from having gotten water and glue on it. Don't panic. These regulations are written for edification, not necessarily for the letter of the law. So we have our middle point, remember, on the wall. And you see in the center of your screen, a pencil line, a vertical pencil line, over which I placed a laser line, which goes straight up and straight down from my Bosch laser level. My product is sufficiently tacky. Pay strict attention to the instructions 
on your product because they mean business when they tell you where to put the glue and how long to leave it. Pay strict attention to that because they've tried it and they know what's best for the particular product. Pay very close attention on where to put the glue, whether it's on the product or on the wall, and how long to leave it. I can tell you, this is one of the few products on the entire market that will tell you glue the product and wait till it sets up getting tacky. Okay? Most products that tell you to wait before the product gets tacky, before you hang it, is products are products that tell you to glue the wall. So pay very close attention, please. Let's hang it. The center of our product will be on the center of our wall. The laser will be on the center of the wall covering, therefore. Let's hang it. The unique aspect of this product has to do with pasting. Admittedly, few products will tell you to paste the product and wait till it tacks up. The reason for that is one simple characteristic about this product. It's very heavy. And so if you were to take this product and paste it and then hang it on the wall, this particular product only makes contact with the wall at 50% of its backing because some of it is raised and some of it is not. Therefore, the parts that contact the wall is about 50%. You see the dark flower stripes on this product? They stick out. They're actually raised up. They look flat right now. But in a couple of minutes, they pull away from the wall. The product is actually made where the darker stripes and the lighter stripes are not at the same flush level, believe it or not. And that is why they tell you, wait till the product tacks up when you put the paste on the backing. You see, since the product is only making 50% contact with the wall, that is, half of those stripes are contacting the wall when you attach the product to the wall, it becomes heavy. And since only half of it is contacting the wall, it would fall off. That's the reason for the admonition and the instructions. But nevertheless, after time, after about 72 hours, the whole product attaches itself to the wall. It's a very unique product from Philip Jeffries. I wound up falling in love with this product, not only because of its inherent beauty, but because of the way it looks at the end of this video. You have to see it. I encourage you to fast forward and just take a look at the final product. It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't suggest that this product be hung on orange peel texture. Take a look at the lighter stripes right there. As I manipulate this product with this roller, you see the bumps underneath the lighter strips. You see that? I don't like that. I am more inclined toward perfection. I don't like bumps. I'm from New York. We don't hang wallpaper over bumps. But in Florida, the, the textured walls are very popular. Uh, in New York, this is not where we learned how to hang wallpaper on this type of stuff. And so you'll see at the end, perhaps not up close, but at the end, you see the bumps underneath the white strips. And the folks who had me install this, they were not being parsimonious with regard to the uh, installation. They just, they didn't see any impact uh, of that with regard to its beauty. 
And so we're ready to hang to the left and to the right now. Going back to our sample piece on which we placed water, glue, you judge for yourself on whether or not that had a negative impact on the beauty of the veneer. I can tell you that on my sheet, it has had no effect whatsoever. So, all I could tell you from that is, I wouldn't panic if I were you. If I got water or paste on the facade or the shell of this material. Let me just show you the process by which I apply the glue here. As you can see, this unique product has a ribbed texture, right? I mean, even the label of the product told us that it was textured. Now, as a new installer, or perhaps even a veteran installer, you might say, well, is the raised part, which would be this, and this, and that, is that supposed to be raised on the wall? And the answer is no. It's not. Let me prove it. This material and that material on this backing are the same thing. They absorb the glue. You have to wait until this tacks up And guess what happens? This flattens out on the wall. Oh no, don't be deceived into thinking. Is that the way it's supposed to be on the wall? No, 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 no. <clears throat> right now, what you're looking at is a manifestation of the process by which they apply this hyacinth onto this backing. And so you can see that the backing is tight when they apply this. And so this piece and this piece are applied separately and it manifests in itself in a ribbed form on the back. But please don't think, well, I guess that's the way it's supposed to hang. You will have air pockets here if you think that you shouldn't press this down. I just don't want anybody who checks my video and says, oh, that's the way it's supposed to look. No, no, no. This is just revealing a certain effect of the manufacturer having put these strips all individually. This was put separately from this and that. And so when we put it up, you're right to think this is textured. Listen. But when it goes up, it's going to sound like this. All the same. And the way I apply my glue is simply with a paint roller. This product says on the instructions not to pull this through a pasting machine, but I don't see any reason why not. It's a lot of cleanup when you pull a pasting machine onto a job for a wall. So I choose to roll it on. <clears throat> now, if you want to wait for your glue to tack up, well, that's fine. But I want to show you the way that I accelerate the process of this glue tacking up. If you just flatten it out, you could do this with a sponge. Just flatten it out. It tends, when you rub it in, you reduce the time by, I would say, one half. So that's what I do. I push it in with my hands. Now I want to show you this wall covering before it goes on to this wall. 
you may have noticed that I have a very insignificant to the product texture on this wall. Very insignificant. In fact, if you look at our scrap, it does not affect the wall covering. This stuff is super thick. But in case you didn't believe me, let me show you how the wall covering looks before it goes on the wall. Let's take a look at it from a side angle. Look. It has its peaks and valleys, okay? You see this? Please don't attribute that to the texture. Okay, this is a natural product. Somebody actually put this together with their hands. Let's see? Don't expect to flatten this out. You will ruin the facade. You can eliminate a lot of this, but not all of it. Let me prove it to you. Let's go over here. You see that? Now, when I touch this, you get the impression that it's almost thin leather, but don't be tempted to handle it like that. See? There's only so much that you can put friction on this, okay? Now, what I did here, I'll show you on a subsequent cut. Okay, first of all, you're probably saying, oh my gosh, it doesn't match up, Spencer. I, I ask you to refer to the, the uh, diagram and you'll see that this material does not meet up. Okay, please take a, a good look. You'll see right in the center of your screen, this piece does not meet up. Okay, so please understand that is not a function of a failure on my part. It's just the design. That's number one. But more importantly, what did I do here? Well, I wanted you to see the product first and then explain it to you as I did it. And that's why I did the glue and water test on this product. What you're looking at is the result of a double cut. Now, here's the deal. Philip Jeffries says in the product, do not do a double cut, do a bench cut. And you'll remember at the beginning of the video, I gave you a couple of scenarios where the directions say one thing and oftentimes you find yourself not following them. Now I can't stay here and tell you don't follow Philip Jeffrey's directions. I, I can't say that because who knows what could happen today. But I can only tell you what I did. You understand what I'm saying? I put the product on the wall because I opted not to do a bench cut. A bench cut is when you trim the material on your table or your bench. And so it's called a bench cut. And so Philip Jeffries was told by installers, we think it's best that they do a bench cut. But there's not an installer out there who's been doing this for years who will tell you that you absolutely must do a bench cut. I'm going to tell you why. What's the difference between a bench and a wall? One is horizontal and one is vertical. Isn't that the case? Okay. Now there are accompanying factors that make that statement false, but essentially that's the difference between a bench cut and a wall cut. Now we tested the material, did we not? So let me tell you what I did. You see this laser line? I overlapped it one inch and I cut it at the half inch. So now my sheet is a half an inch shorter on this piece 
end on this piece because I overlapped it an inch and I cut it in the middle. Now you tell me, you look at that cut. Now let me roll it because we don't just leave it like that, right? Not too hard. We are mending this cut with a roller. Okay. One of the very few times I use a roller. I don't like using them because look at the track marks it makes. Okay, then I gotta get them out. But this is one in which I will say you absolutely need to roll your seam. Because here's why, you have competing levels here. You see this lighter color here? That's, remember the back of the wall covering? One is raised, one is not. Well, this is the inverted one and this is the raised one. And so consequently, you have a differential in thresholds. You see that? And so you have to do your best to make your seams as unnoticeable as possible. Now you will never get to match up the raised texture to the raised texture. It's just not the way this pattern is, okay? And secondly, you do not reverse these strips. You do not reverse the strips because it would affect the pattern. Watch this. You have chevrons here. Down, up, down, up. If you reversed it, you would have up, down, down, up, or something like that. It would actually affect the layout. So you don't reverse these. Your top is your top throughout. So I'm gonna continue and then I'm gonna show you a double cut and then we're just gonna wrap it up by putting the rest of the sheets on. But I told you the essentials about this. As far as a professional is concerned, the caveats and the pros and some of the cons. But uh, you do your best and I tell you, I can tell you this, I could have a person who never hung wallpaper hang this if I just sat in the room and told him or her what to do, they could do it. It's really that simple. I took frog tape and I simply ran a piece of frog tape up the edge of the wall covering on each side in order to protect the product from absorbing the paste so that it wouldn't be noticeable after installation, just to protect it, just in case the product were inclined to drink the liquid of the paste. And so I'm just showing you, I took the yellow frog tape, which is very good for sensitive surfaces. Uh, it's not going to pull off that flower, that hyacinth. And I just overlapped it onto the yellow tape, the next piece, so that I could cut through it. You've seen me do this in prior videos. And then with the laser, I use the laser to cut a straight line. If I were to do it on the bench, a bench cut is simply using a metal guide to draw the straight line. I find it a lot easier to cut a long sheet of wall covering on the wall rather than on the table. Wouldn't, do you agree with that? In this part of the video, I'm speaking over the live action just to consolidate the info. This product being chevrons, slanted down, then slanting up, there's a symmetry here that you have to obey. You see I'm measuring? You don't want to be nonchalantly cutting off an inch and a half on one side of the wall covering and then two inches on the other, just kind of winging it. You want to measure precisely the same cut on the left of one sheet as the same cut on the right side of the same sheet. It's important. Let's recap. My laser line is right over where I cut. So now I have an overlap waist. That's a half an inch long.
okay? And so if I have a half an inch overlap waist, I should have an overlap, an underlap waist of half an inch as well. You don't want to leave the underlap on the wall too long. You can hear it resisting as I'm pulling it up before I did the voiceover. Remember, the paste is already half tacked up. So if it's already half dry, so to speak, you don't want it waiting on that wall too long. Now is joining our overlap and underlap. Come on, anybody, you can do this. Gentle, okay? Here's where technique comes in from the experience. Look, up, down, up, down. We're going according to those patterns that are natural products, right? We don't want to be too rough. And so, there you go. Okay. Don't rush this when you're dealing with natural stuff. Don't rush it. You can really uh, mess it up. Okay? Like, I'm not going to edit this out of the video. It's a little dry there. Okay? Let me just show you how I'm going to handle that. I don't want to put more glue in there. I'm going to try to get that glue to stick. I don't want to, I don't want it wet on the edge. And that's how you do your double cut on this special natural product from Philip Jeffries. Now let's say you get torque in this product. What am I going to do with this? What's going on here? This is what I call moody wallpaper, okay? And if we think we're gonna get this out by simply going like this, boom, you're gonna make a mistake. What do I do? Anybody have any suggestions? Anybody? How are we going to eradicate this? Somebody, please make a suggestion. Well, First of all, let's not think it over too much. When you think it over too much, you mess it up. Okay? Shh, don't tell anybody. I believe that. Ah. Oh. Like that. You can't just leave that like that. You can't just cut that. If I told you how many times I had to come up with solutions for which there are no directions, I would be a rich person. Okay, now what are we going to do? Careful now. Who says to leave it like that? Come on, the customer will never know. Oh, yes, they will. Oh, yes, they will. New blade. Think too much. If you do, you're messing up. Okay. Now what did we just do? We did a double cut. 
That's what we did. We did a double cut. Why not? Who said you can't do it? Who says? You're the paper hanger. Guess what that makes you? The boss. Makes you the boss. Are you kidding me, Spencer? Who taught you how to do that? Well, guess what? If you don't learn how to do these things, no one's ever gonna tell you how to do it. Why not? For one reason, it's a liability. If Philip Jeffries were to tell you how to do this, it would incur a liability on them. All they want to do is sell you the product. They don't care how you get it up. They don't care. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to roll it. By the way, you see that air pocket I pointed out with the text? If that were stuck there, you could put a slice along the edge where the dark and the light hyacinth meet and just put a slice in it and push that air out. Had torque. It's moody paper. It, in other words, it doesn't want to stay plumb. What do I mean by that? This edge here is plumb, but evidenced by what we saw here, it, mm, it's, not, it, it's not conforming. There you have it. So, I appreciate it if you kept a secret between us and you didn't tell anybody. Okay. Of course, we're gonna work out all of these little air pockets. If you see, they're working out already over here. By the way, just for your um, information, this stuff the instructions on this product from Philip Jeffries says what I call finessing it. you it's can expect it out, most it down, of these sure little air right. pockets. I, I I'm talking about long, the little ones that I'm trying to flatten out. To you can expect most of them okay, to on. come out within 72 hours. Now, I had to come back to this residence after installation. They all came out. But I think they all came out because of the manipulation that I did on the paper with the roller and relieving the torque, making that product lay down. So we have a half inch line from our edge. And then we'll put a laser line on this line so that when we overlap it and we block this, we'll know where to cut it, right? Doesn't matter what blade you cut your double cuts with. Here's an 18 millimeter. Here's a nine millimeter. Who says I can cut it? with either of these blades. These are all the same. This is a nice, stronger blade. When I cut through, you know it's not gonna snap. Well, if you said I could do it with this one, you'd be wrong. If you said these, you'd be right. Let's go over to our wall and explain why. Look at the thickness left to right of that blade. Look at that, right in the center of your screen there. Look at that. That puts a wider cut. You wanna use the thinnest blades possible. I'm going to be using these. 
Okay, so I just cut through this and I'm taking this away. And so now we have our underlap, right? See it? And lo and behold, it's right up against our yellow edge, see? <clears throat> See that? You may have a different way to do it. You know what? You may freehand it. I, I don't advise anybody to freehand it. I've seen messes that were freehanded. And I suggest that you don't treat this product in that way. That, by the way, that's a real lazy hand, if I may say so. Freehanding something and putting your product at risk of being this way, like, you know. This, that's lazy. If I saw that, I would... Uh, I would not have that installer working for me. People aren't stupid. They check out the lines when you leave. Plus, what does it say for the installer who wants to give, who doesn't care about giving a crooked line? This is your best line right here. I mean, even if it were a little off, you tried. You went with a laser. This is hard to cut. You're going through these two layers of, it's thick product. And you gotta keep changing the blade. I changed the blade three times the way down. All right, let me clean it up and be done with this seam. I hope you're enjoying the video. Please, if you are, click on like below and subscribe to my channel and hit the all button bell so that you get all subsequent videos hey do you need wallpaper check out this link wallpaperboulevard.com you can get this and many selections on this link use the hashtag spencer colgan is wallpaper on your screen so that you can enjoy the benefit of receiving a 10 percent discount just for watching this video